bees make the coolest sound. Too funny. So I thought when I go to the school next week what I was going to do is I'm going to take this folder that I've made up of all these little miniature artworks I've been making and the kids can look at them and they, then they can get ideas of what the possibilities are and I mean they're endless. And I'll take another stencil beside the Mona Lisa because not everyone probably wants to do the Mona Lisa so I'll take a selection of stuff they can do. So I'll do a demonstration first of what what some of the possibilities are. I was working on a texture for uh, my texture kit and um, oh, I'm so happy with the results of it. So I'm just organizing the video for that at the moment. But that's the texture here. It's like a, it's like a it's probably the worst type of light to show it in because it's so bright, but it's like a rust texture. You know when metal's been sitting out in the elements and it gets all rusty and the paint all goes funny and we've got like these beautiful undertones of blue and oh, I'm so happy with that. So I've documented that process so now I'm just making the video for it. And there was another one I made and that was the first one I made but I decided I would put blue undertones because like this blue and red they sort of really bounce off each other so that was oh, I had fun making those and didn't take long at all probably took me 10 minutes with a heat gun but if you don't have a heat gun then I mean what's a couple of hours between coats one of my all-time favourite artists is a guy called Jim Dine. He's an American artist. Um, and he does these really, really funky pencil drawing, charcoal drawings, uses paint. Um, but they're just really amazing, the, the tones he creates. And some of these take years to make like he really can destroy the paper and bring it right back to almost the the bottom of it and like he joins bits like he'll do a composition and then work out and then instead of stopping at the paper he'll just add another piece on and continue on actually I learned so much from this guy that's his self-portrait back there I learned so much about drawing from this guy um, just the way he talks about it it's just got this free open style like there he's just added the paper on so I recommend you check him out Jim Dine that's his name there some drawings this book is called because it can really help you uh, open up and find some new ways of drawing and some new possibilities which you may not have seen before and actually my lecturer at university put me onto this guy when we were in drawing class and as soon as I saw his work it was like a light bulb moment it's like oh wow so you can't like how cool is that you can draw like that and uh, it was an eye opener so I think it's a good a good um, he's a good artist to look at I want to do some uh, some different stuff apart from painting. Um, like I'm mainly a painter, yes, but I also like to dabble in um, sculpture, um, s uh, like ceramics, working with clay and um, plaster of Paris. So in an upcoming video in some videos that are upcoming I'm going to be actually making some clay heads 
and also these really cool little wall tiles made out of plaster and I'm going to show you how to make them because they're a lot of fun, cheap to make you can sell them at art fairs, you can give them to family for Christmas presents and they're really groovy and I've made a quick video just to show you some of the wall tiles I've made, none of them are finished I sold a few at my last art fair but these were like the leftovers ones that I didn't weren't really happy with but I'm going to work over them anyway so check this out Hi guys in an upcoming video I'm going to show you how you can turn a, ba a bag of plaster of Paris into little wall tiles um, <clears throat> basically you can create any shape or size of wall tile that you like uh, any thickness I was experimenting with different th thicknesses like that's really big thick and chunky to quite thin and I've also experimented with different uh, attachments on the back the best one I found would be this one it's just um, metal that, uh, sorry wire that's been coated with plastic and I've actually inserted that into the plaster when it's still um, setting and um, I'm going to sh show you how to make up the plaster and create these little tiles and for this one I've like I've actually used an engraver and engraved it back uh, sandpaper different effects so it's basically up to your imagination and if you want on the sides I haven't done it to everyone but I've started to put gold leaf imitation gold leaf around the edge and they're good little presents you can give away or if you're at an art fair you can sell them little cool wall tiles very cheap to make and you get some really really cool results so that's what's going to come up quite soon so race out and get yourselves a bag of plaster and the rest well we can work with it all right see it's so warm look even poppy's under the tree hey poppy huh poppy yeah on ya poppy on ya Look at these cool little flowers from the garden. You really tell it's spring. Everything just shoots to life. Okay, so I came back and I decided I'd use spray paint on the dandelion leaves and just basically put the leaves down and spray over the top. And once again through playing you get some really cool combinations really cool effects some work some don't uh, my favorite at the moment would be I quite like this one here you get all the leaf patterns coming through and I quite like this one here because you get the leaf pattern again and I quite like this one I've used this old gate the plastic one well it fell in half. I used like ripped it apart so it was in two stages. So I used some of that. But it just goes to show you that, see, don't be precious about your work. Um, it's only when you become precious about your work you get scared. And once you get scared you might as well just give up doing art completely. So it's all this element of risk, taking a chance and I mean these ones had lots of Mona Lisa images on them and now they've just become another layer and so from here I'll bring them some of the Mona Lisas back over the top and work them into the compositions